All right, so now we've taken a look at the vertex shader. Let's take a look at the fragment shader. So as we can see, the fragment shader is going to take in a V2F struct, right? As a, a V2F struct, which we're gonna call I, and it is bound to this SV target, which is a render target, right? Meaning this is gonna output to a, a render target, which in our case is gonna be the frame buffer for the screen. Um, so we have a handy little comment here. We're gonna sample the texture, right? And let me delete this apply fog comment. So we have a fixed four called call. Now this is a color, right? And so we can have fixed four packed arrays that are coordinates, X, Y, Z, W, or we can have a fixed four uh, that is RGBA, red, green, blue, and alpha. So in this case, we're using a fixed four for a color, four floats to represent a color and an alpha channel. And so we're gonna say, okay, this new color variable is equal to, and here's another helper function, text2d, and this is gonna read in the color from our main text variable, uh, our main text property, and the UVs from the struct, from the V2F struct, right? So this is gonna take in the data from the struct and say, okay, based on what we've got in terms of where the model is relative to the camera and the world and the data that we have in our texture and this UV data, we are going to draw these colored pixels here, right? And so this is what gets us this, right? So this is, we have our character being drawn. There's no lighting. It's just directly drawing the pixels from the texture UV mapped correctly onto our 3D model, right? So this is like the very, very simplest default unlit shader. Just if you make a new unlit shader, this is what it does, right? And I took out the fog. Okay, so let's now start making some changes. And we're gonna start with something really simple, which is we're gonna add a color tint property and we're gonna tint, uh, we're gonna tint the colors that are being drawn. So I'm gonna go up to the top and I'm going to add a tint color property called, you guessed it, tint color. It's gonna be of the type color and it's gonna be equal to white. So we declare it here, right? This is like declaring a public variable and if we save it, this will now appear, here we go. There it is, tint color and it's white, right? This will appear in our inspector, but it's not yet doing anything in the shader, right? And in order to do that, we need to declare it down here inside the CG program as well, right? So, and the name needs to match. So because this is a color, we're gonna use a float four. So this is gonna be float four tint color. and save. And so this convention of using the underscores here is not necessary. You can call it whatever you want, uh, but this is just a convention that's already in the file and that I'm following. But if you wanna be different, you can. Um, so now we have our tint color, right? And it's ready to be used in our shader. We have the public property, and then we have the variable in the CG program. So we're gonna take this and we're just gonna do something really simple, which is we are going to add it to our output of our texture 2D, right? So here we're getting the color from the texture, and now we're gonna add a tint color. Now what this is gonna do is gonna make the colors brighter, right? Because we're adding the two values together. If you wanted it to just be a kind of a non-additive tint, you would multiply it, right? And actually we can see first what that looks like. So let's try it with multiply. It's basically red and black, so it's not gonna have a big effect, but basically if we were on white, if we multiply, we can see, like if we multiply it by blue, it's gonna start to like cancel it out, right? Just turns black basically. So not super exciting for multiply, but if you wanted to just do like a regular tint to tint a sprite, for example, 
uh, this is what you would do. You would multiply it. But we're going to do something a little different because we want to make this kind of neon effect. So we want these this additive color look. So we're going to add this value instead of multiplying it in. And you can also try dividing and doing other weird stuff and you can create some other interesting um, effects. So now when we add it, we can see that it is adding this blue value to uh, the existing color, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dial it back and we're just going to go for something kind of understated, right? But just the added color means that this is never black, right? It's this kind of it's this kind of uh, dark blue, sort of self-illuminated looking dark blue color, which in my mind looks hologram-ish, right? And so really, really simple there. We just added a new public property so that we can edit it in Unity. We added a variable, and then we added that color in the fragment function to the color of our texture uh, to create this effect. So not, you know, super complicated, but getting us started uh, modifying this default shader. The next thing that we're going to do is we are going to make this transparent. Um, and we're going to do that in the next segment.